Yo, what's up, y'all? I'm Charlotte here. Welcome back to the channel. We are back with another Let's Play, a build showcase within Memnon Gaming itself. And we have something very unique, something very differently to showcase you, something completely off meta. And a build I like to call the Reaper. Um, this build, to my surprise, it is very versatile, it's so much fun to play, and it deals a shit ton of damage. So, before we can dissect this build and showcase you how I constructed it and where you can find the different loots and everything, I'm gonna showcase you again, like we always do, um, and a beautiful intro of different boss battles, the difficult bosses you can find in the game itself, so you have a true under understanding and feeling um, how strong this build actually is, and so if you want to play and this type of playstyle as well. Also, sit back, relax, and enjoy this beautiful build and do beautiful intro of the Reaper. Yeah, I see it all, top of the world. Yeah. You know I'm a world changer, so as the world changes, I'm making history so they remember me. That's why I'm so dangerous. They don't make them like me anymore. Come from a cloth that you couldn't afford. If you had it all, then you probably want more. So behind the hatred, I know I'm a door. Yeah, I'm on the top of the world. There's nothing you can do about it. Looking at what I've become, I never became a coward. Nothing can stop me. showcasing you my Reaper build of Eldering itself and this build is something that completely surprised me that took me completely out of surprise in the form of damage output that this actually does um, when this weapon first dropped for me in the gravesite I was completely in awe and from the aesthetic and the look of this weapon I just look at it it looks completely menacing and it's completely dope as fuck I love it I completely love it this weapon and I'm completely in love um, with everything that it looks, how it plays and how it feels, I have so much fun in it. Um, this build, the idea of this build, how I constructed it, I constructed it in an idea of uh, the Father Garcia of Bloodborne and a Dante Inferno. Because I'm a, fan of, uh, a massive fan of Dante Inferno, if you know the books and the animation. Um, he uses a scythe as well to fight the demons in the underworld. 
So I wanted to create a build um, based on that form of playstyle. And of course, Father Castillo of Bloodborne is quite a unique um, NPC and boss and, uh, and uh, just uh, NPC you find in Bloodborne itself, a very unique weapon. So I wanted to uh, dedicate it that as well and for that form of playstyle. So I'm trying to I made something that is a cross as a crossplay between a strength and a bleed. So how what I actually did from it. Uh, we're gonna check the equipment, the inventory there, and the stats that we actually applied. So but first we're gonna start on the stats because that is the one you're actually most uh, interested in. Uh, what we have first, we have 152 uh, rune level. I tried to keep my build around 152, um, that's the max cap I tried to go, between 130 and 152, that's the way I always try to keep my builds. Uh, I find it a nice cap because you're not too overpowered and you're not too weak neither if you keep it between 130 and 152 um, to do every single content that the game has to offer and same form of uh, connectiveness and come with PvP I and mean, with other player becomes quite easy as well uh, you don't have to uh, you're not too overpowered to be able to play uh, with other people so that's why I try to keep all my builds between 130 and 152 so still have the form of uh, connectivity with other players itself so I make sure my attribute points that I uh, put in uh, put 60 points into figure to make sure I have uh, necessary health so I don't get one shot that easily uh, into the game um, even though that the boss can one shot you at any single given moment um, I still wanted to put 60 points into figure uh, just to have the little uh, form of self ability just in general 9 points into uh, mind that is my base stats and goes to my mind um, and do in 38 so I can wield a form of heavy armor that I'm wielding right now and the form of the setup I have um, not 38 points is what I needed to be able to wield everything that I have right now um, without worrying myself uh, for fat rolling and uh, all this uh, um, annoying uh, mechanics that can uh, become quite annoying for me I form a ability into the game I put 66 points into strength um, because uh, when if you single handedly wielding a weapon and you do wielding it, you have to count the 1.5 uh, multiplier into uh, accounts. So 66 points uh, um, you multiply it by 1.5, that's equal to 99 points. Um, that's the max cap. So the moment you do wielding a certain form of weapon, it's just, uh, you have to count a multiplier of 1.5 on it. So that equal to uh, 99 points. And that's normally how the Soulsborne um, calculation actually works in form of uh, DPS calculation. I put dexterity at 50 points um, because um, it gave me an opportunity to wield in the form of weapons. Intelligence 7, Faith 25, and Arcane 11. Um, Faith and Arcane, uh, Arcane is my base stats and um, 25 into faith um, because the magic I'm trying to use is to buff my attack power even higher it's required me to have at least 25 points into faith uh, of course the equipment of course I use um, heavy grave aside I do a wield them on my main hand um, I use the heavy grave staff at plus 25 and the heavy uh, attribute points and ashes of war and the Ashes of War I do apply on this one, it comes out of Phantom Slash. And what it is actually is, uh, you probably saw the other the is this one. It's a very, that's my gap closer. A, I love it how it looks. It does a dual attack, my ghost attack, and myself as well, attack as well. And it does like the fasting um, DPS output it gives. The nice thing about um, the Grave site, um, it causes also bleed effects. Um, but if you're scaling it in a normal way, uh, the maximum for heavy, I give 55 points into uh, scaling up blood loss I apply on my main hand. But that will be scaled up thanks to the buff that I use in form of a weapon incantation. On my off hand, because my left hand, I use the blood grave site um, with blood uh, bleed effects. Uh, thanks to that, um, Having a hundred and one um, dots points uh, can be caused towards my uh, target itself. Uh, thanks to that, I have on my main hand and my off hand uh, 
dot effect that is uh, staggering high um, because of that my bleed and uh, it pucks himself quite fast I've got the ashes of war that I use doesn't matter which ashes of war you apply in it so long as it's just an uh, ashes of war you apply bleed effect in it I choose the bloodhound step um, I'm 9 out of 10 times um, if I do want to escape something it's nice to have a bloodhound stamp so I can escape something quite fast uh, otherwise I use my DPS output uh, from for Ashes of War and my main hand is the of course the Phantom Slash that I use for the DPS output then I have the, the bloody Uchitano uh, another, again increases my dot effect by 8, uh, 8 to 3 points and uh, the bloody Uchitana I never used to be honest with you I only used the bloody Uchitana with seppuku on it what the seppuku does as um, a suicide Japanese um, move that we do um, what it actually does for me is increase my attack power the moment I apply it and it's seppuku so I always make sure I use a seppuku before um, any form of other incantation that I use and uh, of course before uh, um, engaging the battle itself to increase my attack power it will become clearer uh, later on I'm going to show you the combination of how I do it and of course I use the greystone seals 25 because it has a nice scaling I've got the faith and it really boosts my incantation the moment I use it I give you also the opportunity to use dragon cult incantation if I want to do, uh, change my playstyle as we move forward in the game just to just, uh, have us um, diversity into the game itself so keeping that option as well of course the gear sets i use of course the royal remains and the white mask first of all the white mask is a very important mask it's not only i use it for the aestheticness uh, because of the look i'm a grave um, not a grave digger i want to say but someone who is uh, very close to the underworld and a very menacing character um, it looks very quite menacing this mask but the nicest thing about um, this mask actually increases and slightly increase my attack power the moment I have a blood loss. Um, I, I, as I, everything that I do in this build is based on stacking my uh, my bleed as high as possible and as fast as possible. So this little puppy and uh, is gonna uh, proc himself quite a few times uh, before the fight ends. So um, this increases my attack power for another ten percent thanks to this. Another thing I use is Royal Remains, and Royal Remains, first of all, I'm going to showcase to you. Look at this, it's absolutely stunning. I, f I find it this look and how it looks on my character, it, it fits perfectly, really fit perfectly on um, everything I want, want to do with uh, um, demons, demonic, the underworld, and that's kind of beautiful stuff. <laughs> Definitely let me know in the comments down below what you think of it. Um, the reason I chose this weapon as well, that is gear sets, um, because it slowly replenishes my health and um, when my FP is uh, reduced. So, because I'm always in close quarter combat and the abilities that I use to buff myself um, deduct themselves from my HP. This makes sure the moment I do that, my HP is being restored uh, steadfastly. So, I have a certain form of a balance into uh, uh, what I lose and what I gain as well. So. That's why I use it as well. And of course, um, because I'm always in close quarter combat, the boss will hit me, they will manage to hit me. Um, it will protect me, has a nice form of defense, uh, damage and negation. But the nicest thing, like I said before, it's really um, replenish my health steadfastly moving into the battle itself. It's quite nice to have. I follow a talisman that I use, I use of course the first talisman is, is the what, Wing Swords Exynvo. What it does, increase my attack power every successful attack. What I did that means, I mean every single time I do a combo or something like this. And it's of course hitting my target. Every successful attack, this increases my attack power. Then I have the Claw Talisman, it increases my jump attack. The moment I jump and I do my attack, that jump attack is increased uh, in power thanks to the cloth talisman then I have what that makes the salify my build really perfectly is the load of blood exaltation what this actually does and um, increases my attack power the every single time I have a blood loss you have to remember every single thing that I do when it comes to the weapons and the gear set that I have and the incantation that I'm using is all made sure that it scales himself perfectly with one another um, so it works together nicely so I proc my bleed as you saw on the trailer itself extremely extremely fast one or three hits maximum four 
I'm a bleed prox every single time. And that's, that's crazy, that's like completely insane. So every single time my attack power is increased. Thanks to this uh, talisman. Then I have the Shard of Alexander. And greatly boost my attack power of my skills. Um, what does that mean? Not only the ashes of water I apply, also the incantation that I use is also uh, scaled uh, thanks to the Shard of Alexander. So every single time I have a buff uh, on my weapon, on my main weapon, I use this. The Shard of Alexander will make sure that the DPS output from that weapon, that skill, and the incantation that's applied on that weapon is increased in power itself. So that's completely insane. So every single thing that I do uh, with this build is make sure that my attack power is always increased. So um, every single thing I do damage, my attack power is increased. So there's a goal in it, so I really melt my enemy, I melt my bosses, uh, or my target, just any target, very, very fast. Um, when I use a form of uh, spirits and summoning, there are a lot of spirits, a lot of summoning, and they're all amazing, they're all good. I'll be making a video of um, the best summoning I've found so far in my own perspective. It's going very soon. Um, I use uh, the Black Knight Teach, no matter how you call it. Uh, what it does actually, the way I'm using this one, um, because this has like a Siphon Life ability on it. Uh, it's, um, it has a Rune of Death that's through Gold with the Golden. So every single time he uh, targets the enemy, and the bosses for example, who has a lot of health, he chose like an, uh, a beam of uh, death around it. If the beam targets the hits the boss, it starts siphoning his life. And uh, the higher the boss's uh, health is, the harder the tick becomes of the ability. So it's quite nice to have. You probably saw it on the, uh, the video uh, showcase the intro. Um, suddenly you see the tick going, the health of the boss going very fast, very uh, slowly down thanks to this ability of uh, this enemy, of this uh, summoning. I like to have it because it's quite mobile as well and it's quite strong. Um, it, do it does its job perfectly in the form of uh, um, doing damage against the bosses and of course distracting them because it's so mobile the moment they target the boss it's so mobile he can do he dances around the boss it gives you the opportunity to, to buff yourself much much easier. So and that's why I like to use it. Um, it gives you a little bit of breathing area if you want to buff yourself in an instance uh, yeah, because this little uh, ninja is quite mobile and quite strong as well if it comes to a flask of wandering physic i'm using of course um, the green burst crystal tier uh, i typically boost my stamina recovery um, because i'm always close quarter combat and uh, sometimes i do lack a form of stamina so i have this to make sure that my stamina is recovered quite fast and, and the second thing that i use is the hidden tier and eliminate my, all my fp consumption Thanks to this, um, I'm able to use my mind ability with zero problem. So let us show this to that. Um, very fast, let me replenish my, my flask. Now, if you can see right now, I cannot use it because I haven't, I haven't applied it. So the moment I actually use my flask, where is it? Right here, I want to physically. I can use my summoning right now. You can see? Cross is gone, so now I can apply it. That also means every single ability that I have right now it doesn't cost me anything so long. That actually takes now the thing is gone, of course. That I have FP, I can start using my now. So that's super, super important. Actually, that you understand that, that you understand it. the moment you apply uh, this flask of bonded physics, and uh, you make sure that you apply all the buff that you need to apply accordingly to the balls you need to fight. You need to remember as well that not, not every single boss uh, can be uh, damaged with bleed. Certain boss, um, because they're made from uh, harder stone, metal, or whatever um, alloy that they are made from, uh, they cannot just be bleeded. So, um, so you have to apply to a different form of incantation. That's why I have um, my uh, flame grant uh, strength on me, I have my, uh, my vicar and uh, dragon bolts on me. But just for those and uh, enemies that cannot be bleeded, so that can increase my attack power. So what my flame grant strength actually does, increase my attack power. So at this instance, I have 738 attack power on the main hand of 597. So the moment I actually, let's see, I use my flask of physical skill again. I use this 
and I'm gonna use my okay. and I'm gonna use this one for example. a different form of combination if I use for example I use and I use only this type and I use simply group attack power then increase a thousand two hundred and eighty five so you always need to remember and that's my main hand a thousand sixty five on half hand um, you, need to, you need to remember um, a Viker Dragon Bolt there's a, a buff effect it creates like a form of electricity around me that's only specific as some form of targets are weak towards it so once again I always make sure I know what the targets are weak towards to so I make sure I have this uh, buff effect on my weapons so I can give a little extra DPS uh, because uh, that target is weak towards uh, the Dragon Bolt effects um, same thing, uh, the same concept applied towards my bleed effects. Um, as you can see, my Bloodstream Blade, if I apply it, creates an, uh, not only uh, gives you fire damage, it also creates a bleed effect. So my bleed on my weapon is increased scandalously high on my main weapon. I have a grave uh, scythe. Um, so if I apply now, for example, and I apply uh, fire to the synth, That dot from uh, my main weapon is applied to my fire that is in. So every single time now I'm going to attack power. And of course you have to calculate I have a circle to also activate it. Um, the dots, every single one of them is multiplied. Thanks to um, my heavy waste side is increased in from the dot and from the bleed effects. Um, my offhand is so it already has a bleed effect on it but it again increased uh, my fire deadly sin and my uh, white mask and my talisman all of that beautiful stuff will stop fucking myself extremely extremely fast and I will increase my attack power even higher and I do more damage and etc and etc and etc and that's how it actually um, the, build, the, the build actually works um, if you want to engage in a form of battle it's very important that you understand uh, the order uh, of this incantation that you apply it on the rightful way, how it's supposed to, so we truly benefit it on the right way. Um, in form of weapons, where you can actually find uh, the grave sites, uh, the grave um, weapon, you can find it actually right here. Let's go very quickly towards it. I'm gonna showcase you where you need to go. Um, very quick. It's actually very in the beginning of the game itself that you need to go. Uh, it's right here, I like uh, in the area. And right here you're gonna find exactly where we are right now. And it's grave sites. You're gonna find different form of uh ah, let's keep it. So I'll show you this. It's better you should uh, see it for yourself than you are completely understand what I mean. But sometimes you have to find the guys across the whole field and of course eventually they will drop you this site um, it takes some time but eventually they will drop you um, it comes to the uh, the headgear the white mask you need to go actually um, the, the site we where you killed a uh, mark the lord of blood itself the Woku palace where you need to go you see that area over there where the bird is, it's actually here, on the opposite side. So where we are right now, it's in the ledge here. Depends where you're entering, yeah? and this zone. Uh, in my channel, you're gonna find a video that is explaining how you can enter this zone quite easy and quite fast. You need to go down, I take a left, hot left, and right here, you're gonna find the very first invasion um, of, an, yeah, of an NPC in the game itself. And totally you're gonna find three, Second one is going to be here somewhere, and the third one is going to be here somewhere. Now, it's very important if you haven't killed the boss of the zone itself, these three NPCs will proc themselves 
will come and invade you and you have to kill all three of them by killing all three of them they will give you the white mask the thing is um, I have to advise you there's a lot of these birds around you can see one, another one in the distance over there and there's another one somewhere on the left side um, so be careful if you are there make sure uh, you deal with them first or you try to um, engage your invaders in another zone where you have more space to fight them without any disturbance something you have to figure out for yourself uh, how you do it um, if it comes to what else we have as well where you need to apply uh, the lord of blood incantation where you can find the lord of blood incantation and see if i still have that checkpoint because i'm already literally in end game no uh, da -da, the underground roadside Yeah, you need to go here, right here, on the underground roadside. Um, I'm not going to show you what the underground roadside actually looks. Um, it is right here. There's a sewer tunnel. Uh, how you can reach it in the sewer tunnel for the first time. Once again, yeah, there's a specific video on my channel, you will find yourself where you need to go. Um, I high need to reach here to be able to get the uh, the Lord Escaltation you'll find in the channel itself. Um, Shard of Alexander is actually an NPC quest you need to do uh, for the pots you find early on into the game itself. Uh, you're gonna find them uh, very in the beginning of the game and it's gonna be somewhere somewhere here it's gonna be. Let's I'll show you if you go to the same page the very first time you enter uh, Lingrave and you're exploring on left and right I definitely will come into this zone here and you're gonna hear a guy actually uh, screaming for help oh help me, help me, help me, etc, etc, etc and he's gonna be this thing right here so trust the steed Right here. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, those who do know what I'm talking about, you're gonna find a massive pot here, and that's gonna be the start of your quest line. Now, once again, you will find in my channel, and it depends uh, when you are watching it or it's not uploaded yet, but you will find in my channel a, a specific uh, quest line that explain how you can do, uh, finish this quest line. But the beginning starts here, of course, the whole quest line is gonna bring you all over the map of, the, of uh, the, land, the lands between. And eventually you will come all the way to this zone here and that's going to be the end uh, of the quest line. By doing so you're going to need to fight him and he's going to drop you the um, shot of Alexander. But you're going to, it's going to be clear on the explanation of the, the quest line mission itself and when you see it in my channel. Um, then you have the claw talisman. The claw talisman you're going to find this really beautiful baby. Um, it's very quite, quite simple. You go to the right tower. That is the very first uh, public dungeon actually that you actually fight and you deal with early on into the game itself. And uh, what you need to do here is a Stonewheel Castle. Once you arrive here, you probably missed it. It's a different way you can reach it. That's the beautiful thing I love about this game is uh, you can approach this game however you want. You jump here. A lot of people come from that area over there and they jump over there and they have to deal with that stupid bird over there. But the Memnon way is much easier and much more fun and much simpler. So you come all the way over here, you take a left, you take another hard left, watch out for the ambush here. And you deal with these guys. actually gonna find the, the claw talisman but of course I already took it um, it's not gonna be here but I'm gonna show you exactly where you need to see it it's gonna be right here in the corner you see this guy here sitting it's gonna be a purple one that's where it's gonna find the claw talisman 
and the box um, everything and of course for the last um, but last not least like my teach and we need to find this little beautiful baby are you gonna find him right here and the wang leader ever go um, for, to, for you to be able to reach this song you need to finish the Rani quest line um, by finishing the Rani quest line you arrive on the top parts of the village of Albuquerque um, there is like a and there's a double level a form of a zone. Um, the village of Albuquerque is in a cave. Uh, the zone here is complete at top of the mountain itself. So if you finish the Iranian quest line, you will come on top of the mountain. Over here, you will find a dragon that you need to deal with. Uh, you're gonna find some nice beautiful loots here, the ruins as well. But you need to go northwards. There's gonna be a, a ruin checkpoint right here somewhere, and you go all the way north, all the way here, and you're gonna find a find a boss. The equal equivalent of this beautiful baby, the knife teach itself, you need to fight him there. And once you win the battle against the knife teach, um, it will drop you. Apologies, um, it will drop you the um, summoning that you need. At least the summoning, I'm showcasing. And that's it. And that's actually everything that you need to know when it comes to this build. Hopefully, I haven't forgot anything at all. And if I did, and do hit me in the comments down below and uh, on discords and whatever just uh, come and say hi and of course if you did like this content do not forget to press a like you comment down below and subscribe yourself to the channel i'm your host yashino itself also known as memnom so welcome to my channel also enjoy yourself with this beautiful build let me know definitely know what you think about it um, of course the style as well if you appreciate the style i have i'm rocking right now because i absolutely love it it fits perfectly perfectly if you see a guy coming to you like that you're gonna say oh hell no hell no i'm going the other way <laughs> all right guys thank you very much for chilling with me in this episode again i'll see you all next time guys on the next build um i think it's gonna be a quality build i'm gonna do a uh, battle mage um uh, anyway we're gonna do a lot of beautiful stuff uh, it's coming up i'll say don't forget to subscribe yourself so you don't miss out on anything at all see you next time Peace out. Peace.